defense you have G2 and attacking will be OG. This is the first map of three. Group A for the ESL Pro League Season 12 Europe Edition. Divided into regions, you've got con the continents all split up. Um, North America, South America, Oceania, Asia, and here we are in Europe. Machine, Pansy, and Sponge are our gamer nicks, our alias, our avatars. Handles. Or our handles. All right, bit of utility coming out here early. Two nades on the CT sides of things. Nexa and Amanek over towards B wielding those. So, H E. Yeah, it could be a little bit juicy here. Mantu's over towards the log position. He could take some damage if they know he's home. But now with Hunter peering on down, he may be giving the information that things are clear. We can see that it is not. So this duel from Hunter could get sticky. Uh, usually you have to preface that with a situation or something. Otherwise, it's people a get weird. a bit, bit confused. Weird champ. I always got I got told off for using the word sticky. Really? Oh yeah, I think you can have a sticky situation, which okay. actually kind of sounds more innuendo than sticky, to be honest. But yeah, I don't know. I usually pair it with something else. Ladies right. and gents, you guys at home, just very briefly, you did it. You got rushed to 10k. Thank you very much. Oh, that was awesome. The Absolute power superstars. of the internet. Thank you guys. But Ooh, power Slavos. of a need as well. This could be lush. Catch. Couldn't it? Oh God, that's a that's big a chunk, water isn't it? Damage. Oof. No helmet for him. So normally the idea with that is obviously softening up is great, but it pushes them off the line so they're a little bit more scared of taking that duel. Nexer is lucky that he's still partnered up over towards that site with Hunter. And that nade alone has drawn the rotation. So Amanex over towards B as well. And that just leaves Kenny and Jax. And they'll be playing retake A. Oh my goodness, and it's such a big gap. Kenny's going to get the info, it seems. He's trying to fill that void now. He'll be smoked off though. Gosh, this is perfect. A really good read from OG. This passive hold on A after forcing the rotate should be oh, easy to exploit. They're hitting all their shots. Mantu, that's quite the introduction to Inferno. Into the site. Eight seconds to spare, but it's calculated. It's convenient. And poor old G2 locked out of the A site. Wow. That was so swift, so beautifully choreographed. And as said, locked out. I think that's a prime word. Bear in mind, Nexus solo after that nade just, you know, bonked him. Just Pinged my forehead. I don't know what's wrong with me. Isa, tucked into pit though. Is there any P2Ks on deck? Not to be today. It's been saving it. Yeah. All right. Oh, off they go. Thank you, Mantu. I'd love to see it from his POV because he came around that corner at 100 miles an hour. That uh, really unraveled very late within the round. The fact that you pointed out there was only eight seconds left as the bomb was going down, that is some patience from OG right there. And G2 not knowing, you know, anybody was up mid, didn't know how much room was taken over towards the apartment side of things. Easy as you like, that's how we kick things off. It's not the most spectacular fashion, but Mantu with his Ooh. opening, there's the first. Just a little pick on out, and the second, mm. easy as you like. So good start here from OG. Let's see if the force buy comes back. So we will have armor on Hunter. He'll be able to upgrade that into head armor, yes? Uh, Lauren, this is one for you for the, for the rest of the game. Okay. Um, Kenny's got an anime figure on his desk. And I don't know what it's from. And then you're more of a weeb than I am. So it's from One Piece. Piece. Ah, it's uh, Luffy, Luffy. I actually don't watch One Piece. Okay, I'm a, ah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a weeb these days. That's so. out weebed you both. Yeah. Uh, I watch the weird stuff. Ouch, ouch. Amanek did take a boatload of damage here. And that's unconfirmed damage for now. They're yet to turn the corner. And it is five oh. SMGs. Normally we talk about this and it's rare to see the full five SMG purchase. I mean, there's many reasons for it. I'll go into them if it becomes relevant. But at the moment, it certainly does mean there'll be plenty of cash to splash if they can keep this clean. Downside of being that if they do keep it clean, I'll have a Mac 10 to throw away or a bonus round with very low probability of conversion. Amanek is in trouble. Flashed onto the oranges. Valder's already flanking around Nexus. Lovely. Corner. Should be clean, shouldn't it? We, we say this term. Nexa has found MBK. Kenny's getting uh -oh. okay. involved. Oh, Nexa! All right, it's not the P2K, but the Deagle looks just as good. And Issa trying to pick up the pieces. As it all fell apart. Now, this is very doable, though, still, Alex. Oh, it's within the realms of possibility. No doubt about it. It's Nexa who could protect. Ooh, Alyssa was not cognizant. Now spots Jax. Well, he's willingly taking these fights. And Nexa takes four at the end of that one. That is redonkulous. Takes the equalizer. Five SMGs and just kept at mid-range. It actually became favorable to those Desert Eagles, especially with the precision shots from this from Nexa. Let's see. Headshots. Cautious of the boost to Shadow and converts into Valder. And that was the third. That third shot won them the round. Issa 
unable to deal with that double peak. Had the, if he wanted to take the fight onto Nubox, he had to deal with Jax in the back. So I'm not sure if there, there was a bit of a delay on that CT spawn smoke there. So a free kill came through as they were entering the site. Volder took the territory with no deep smoke. The flashes were good as Kenny was already posted up. That's what got him past. But then the smoke faded and the crossfire, it fell apart. So uh, little teething issues to start things off here for OG. Not, uh, not the start I'm sure that they were looking for. As we get to take a look at some of the fan cams, we have that rocking for Cologne. We've got to now look at the bedroom cams and MBK. Weeby t-shirt. He's got a, he's got a, is that Vegeta on his chest? Again, Chad, you're two for two, too, bro. Too mainstream for me. Give me, give I watched me Dragon Ball Z Berserker, back when I was a kid. Devil Man, Toradora, that weird stuff. Oh, That's she's more flexing jam. her. Uh, mm. uh, what I, do yeah. call it? Anime. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm so sorry. Right, okay. Nades. Looking good going out. Oh, chunky damage. You like to see? That's probably a nice little bit of uh, revenge going I mean, next. Oh, is dear. <laughs> Lexi it's, Beast has a nade here as well, so... Uh, God, obviously they don't know what they've achieved. They've made a good assumption, but you don't know how much damage you've just, just caused to that B player. Looks like a very slow pace coming in from OG, just wanting to wait out some of this banana utility. You take a look at the single straggler on alt mid in the apartments right now, just dealing with any aggression. That's MBK. His job is just to hold them at bay. Doesn't actually need to push forward. Doesn't need to do a lot on the map to stimulate the CT side. His job is merely just being a canary in the coal mine. We'll go up and actually clear out boiler and hands of holes. So that means that G2 are playing more of a passive setup. And this information now netted over to OG has seen them now walking up towards middle with Alexi solo clearing banana here. So a bit risque from the in-game leader. But we saw some fantastic things last time these two teams went head to head on train. I really hope we see what, you know, Alexi B brought out before. I really hope he can rekindle that performance. I'm sure both of these teams feeling a little sore after their clone experience, of course. Both having heartbreaks in various stages, but Here we are. that's not bad for Issa, is it? These guys are landing some bangers, and already the danger really finding its placement here. Mantu, again, finding great deals of success quite late in the round, bear in mind, sub 30 seconds, and the last two forced to play this back in in a really uncomfortable predicament. He's got a good molly to clear out that close corner, and it will flush out... Oh, I thought it was... Very deep, Molly, yeah, actually. That's not That's what I was not expecting. the standard one they throw. Not at all. Thought that would make things d difficult for Mantu's close corner. The saving. Yeah, that'll be that. Oh, this is just a standoff early. I, I want to talk a little bit about how G2 normally not perform, but some of the things that I like when I see them playing on the CT side is once they lose map control, they like to play in transition. They'll actually go aggressive with one or two players, take back map control, be sweeping through as the T's think they've actually got control of maybe top mid or boiler room. And then they're dealing with G2 as they're coming on and being more aggressive while they're holding nades out or something along those lines. Here, G2 were just very in the back line, very passive across the board. And another round. So we flip-flopped again here. I keep saying it now. All I can hear is the way I say that word. I need to stop it. What word? Here. Yeah. Oh. I need to stop it. I'm gonna, it's I, just an accent. I'm going to find it. It's allowed, actually perfectly you're, fine you're to have You're allowed to have one. Be, be bold. Yeah. Well, I only noticed it because people were making jokes about it. But Well, know. it wasn't jokes at your expense. No, it wasn't just it wasn't, you, it wasn't know, you, Lauren. It's it wasn't okay, you. mate. It's I okay. I like to get it. All right. All right, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's a force by back. So G2 don't want to give up on this one just yet. UMP's in play and next to in Hunter's hands. It's just a very, very slow approach. Nobody wants to contact with each other early. There's no, no biffing. I do like the term biffing. It does feel appropriate for that early round sort of posturing that they biff. both do. Yeah, just a little bit of peacocking Whoa. almost, isn't it? And again, next... How From much Alexi B damage? as well, I believe. I think Alexi was the one that threw that HE, so he's just peppering away at Nexa. Did someone find out how much nade damage Nexa has received in these first, like, what, four rounds or so? Because I feel like he's been, sadly, the, you know, butt of the joke when it comes to it. Now, the, the old Deagle bros sat here towards Quad, Jackson Kenny. Both landed pretty decent shots with them just a, you know, little moment ago. So maybe could have a bit more of that. Nice little mid-take coming in, though. Yeah, it's cool to see that Molotov in place still. It does make it very difficult to hold the line. Jack's on the balcony close quarters. And about the 40 second mark, deploying a smoke there. That's no problem. That's actually looking pretty damn good. The rotate's coming in in large quantities. Amanek and Nexa backing up onto the site. 30 seconds and they still remain quiet. This will be it. Smokes are flying. And the frags are looking to happen. Another smoke on Kenny. He could just underhand that onto the site. Why hasn't he? Here it comes. 
but they may be a bit too late now. Smokes the balcony, Amanek flashed off, but they can grouped up and it's just, yeah, that is a painful set of circumstances for the French squad. You, you were bang on there, Alex. I was actually going to point that out. There was a couple of smokes in play and the fact that Kenny didn't drop it to unravel the attack or even just make the take onto the A side a little bit more difficult. Maybe they didn't believe it was coming because you could see the yeah. individual over towards Pit gets taken down, not even looking towards that arch side. So OG with this pace, not needing to take fights, not getting themselves in any unnecessary duels early. It found themselves three rounds. So after losing the force by Senexa on the back of the B site, they've been able to turn things around quite quickly. And Hunter's left just with a UMP in hand. So this is very interesting in the early stages. It's reminding me a little bit of the way that G2 were playing on their T side of train. Very timid. Yeah. But I wait till the guns come out. Maybe things will change when Kenny can get the AWP in his hands. That won't be for some time unless there is a drop coming through in the following. He only has 1,900 right now. So you can see the wrap. Alexi kills Jax. And it, look, they're all just pinned on the site. You would think with it this late round and a setup like that, they would be playing in a completely different formation, like more ready to fight and stop and have maybe one guy in there in the open, taking a duel, slowing them down. Kenny had flashbangs to use. Just some indecision right there. I think Alexi's smile says it all. Yeah, and I think you're bang on. I think that the the way you framed that helps us to visualize and to appreciate that it might very well have been the timing that OG used on A that caught them off guard. Because I don't know if G2 oh, were sweet. positioned for that more unconfirmed damage. I don't oh, know see, yeah. if that's the end of Hunter. He only has five HP and Mantu's Going to finish off what he started. Good nade in response, though. So both teams definitely done their homework on all of the variety, the smorgasbord of utility that's available to throw on that B side of the map. And a very early smoke pulled out of the CTs. It's worth reminding you, this is just the full eco outside of Jax's Deeg. And he's just going to be gambling over with his teammates over on B. And through the smoke, Kenny gets caught on the cross. He's down to 23 HP as well. So this eco, not got too much hope. For any G2 fans watching this round, I'm afraid it does look very promising for a 4-1. And they've got Alexi B, so this looks like a smoke coffins, maybe even a smoke CT. Don't have to commit to this. Yeah, the timing. Jax, you rascal. He's found the equalizer with the only investment they made this round. Issa's still trying to probe up mid. He hasn't got any info yet. Nothing. Not even going to have a look. Smoke say, hey, okay, that oh, is... They're, they're going to push into the wall. And it works out wonderfully. Nice bait and switch. Jack's caught in transition. Could be and found. he's been heard. Yeah, okay. With one HP, Manchu finds a fourth. That's not too shabby from the uh, UK flag. Ten kills for Mantu so far. Yeah, Mantu's having a game. And that's quite exciting. So I, I think Cologne was a nice introduction for me towards what he can do as a player. But I don't think he shone as much as maybe Alexi did or some of the others. So it's really nice to see what he can bring potentially to a server. And it's very early days, keep in mind. And Jax still being uh, very much Jax S. Yeah, the, the fact that Jax was the individual who turned things around when they played against OG last time is not the, in, is not the player that you would normally lean towards, right? It would be mm -hmm. Nexa making some big plays within those mid rounds. It would be Hunter stepping up with some, some huge shots. It could be Kenny S with the AWP shutting down the map. But uh, that's not to be the case. And I, I think things are slowing down a little bit here. This timeout indicative of maybe Malik needing to get on the mic and, and get them focused because in the early stages, this pace, maybe that's been a bit of a problem as we get a lovely look into the back of some of these Ooh. individuals' private lives. One piece, okay. Is that, is that one I should put on my to, to watch list? It's very, very long. So there's a bunch of animes. I've been, I had a teacher who was telling me about all the different, you know, the, so the, the, the cult ones. The really long, long like ones. Like the Naruto's of the world. Yeah, exactly. The so Dragon Ball Z's. If you want to get stuck in something for a long time, maybe consider mm, it. Nah, I don't have the attention span of a gnat. Not for me. And Alexi actually does seem like there's a very tiny gap he could exploit here. Yeah, Nexa wasn't prepared for that. Ahead of the nade. And Alexi wants to grow on this. Yeah, and he's going to be struggling. Amanek's not got any bullets left on the reload. He dips out. Found to take space on the reload. He catches just one bullet on the spray. That's not enough. Now Kenny's dead. NBK lines up a double. This is looking very promising for OG. This Inferno T side is really shaping up nicely. I need to ask a bit of a request here. There it is. Just go back to spawn for us, Rush, with a free, free cam. I'm sorry for getting you to do all this free balling stuff you're not used to. But the scout here was bought by Jax at the start of the round. And now you can see he's only into the round with the Famous. So a miss by early as well. So right here, G2 are having a couple of blunders, but this is perfect. Issa's on the hunt. Eesh. Uh. 
quite going to get this finished. That should be an AK-47 to scavenge. And this is the smoke lineup, if you were wondering it. Just so you can lurk around those hay bales. You can see over it that you have an advantage. You can jump on that little railing and peek and poke and prod. It's a very powerful little tool for any uh, A player. So do keep that one in mind. Looks like Jack's going to be surviving. You can peek graveyard without being concerned about sight. It has a lot of purposes. Mm. And just using it to save this time around. That was some pace there, a, a little bit different from what we've seen in the earlier stages. So Alexi entering onto the site. And then again, see, there's no CT smoke once more. We had that come in on their anti-eco round that they did lose to Nexter at the back of the site. I'm not sure if it's meant to be late. I don't know if they actually want to take those fights and leave the site players kind of to their own devices while they go for that. But G2, again, they're on another one of these low buy situations. The saved AK for Jack's couple of upgraded pistols. Smokes in tow as well. It's just a very curious start again. So OG are just doing a great job of slowing down the pace, whittling down these jewels, and winning a lot of them with ease. I've been thoroughly impressed with the variety we've already seen. Like, it looks like a lot of B-leans, but those A-hits were just as fantastic, beautifully uh, executed and well thought through. So we're seeing, I, I think, a very good version of what we, we like from OG, whereas G2, I think, train. The reminiscence is definitely there, but hopefully they, they come online a little bit. It does feel as though the economy has kind of gotten out of control for them, so hopefully it does slip back into place eventually. And let's set the scene for perhaps up. newer viewers as well. Let's not forget that this G2 Esports roster is still pegged by players and talent alike to be a contender for the very best. Now, the recent history, to add to that expectation, is an underperformance at ESL1 Cologne. Out after the player break, a break that every player takes during the summer months so they can kind of avoid that burnout. Mental health is a, is a priority and a big part, of course, of the game that is Counter-Strike. And off this player break, G2 have yet to meet the expectations they have for themselves. And OG will want to really test them. G2 did sail into the semi eventually, unable to post the victory there. The semi-final finish for them was a disappointment and disappointing for OG as they fell to G2 in the quarters. Into ESL Pro League though, and into the A oh. site. Not too bad. Nexa, he destroyed them last time. They pushed with the Deagles. This time, it's only the one. Plant safe on the fountain with six seconds to spare. Jax is the one who can make the difference though, Alex. He's the danger man, the rifle that got left over. He's posted up by Coffin, so he could still do some work here. Amanek coming up through Banana. It's all going to come together. No kit though. So you want Kenny to go in first with Amanek's contact. Seems like Amanek's a little too slow. He's obviously so paranoid about Banana. And that's the rifle. Jax does feel the feet. They've got a molly. Oh, Alexi's just waiting for the time. Five, four. That'll do. And even takes the headshot. Oh, oh. Crispy Finn, baiting with the spray. Does go down, but that's okay. OG six. All right, that's not bad. This, this is really thorough stuff from OG. The, the only issue that may come to haunt them if they continue this pace is that late round, if a lucky kill or a multi-kill comes in from G2 while they're taking the site, there might not be the opportunity for them to get the bomb down. Also, G2 could start holding on to utility a little bit more because we're finally starting to get into some gun rounds right here. She's still got the label on her glasses. I think, isn't that a cool thing that you did you do now? It's never been cool, Chad. I thought, it, oh, okay. Oh, that's a barcode. That's for the person that's scanning it to, to know the price of your glasses. You don't need to keep keep it on when you're looking through the lens. Oh, I don't, I, I don't know what the kids are doing these days, Alex. I just see all the fashion stuff and I just go, oh, yeah. I see everyone tuning in still. Great to see. It's easier to see when you don't have the label on your glasses. You know what? I like their glasses. I like them too. Wasn't criticizing the glasses, guys. Just the decision to put the <laughs> label on it. <laughs> All right. Looks like we might be having a, a, another bit of a, a, a pause here as we're looking at Valda doing a, a bit of chit-chat. Is chit -chat. That, uh, a little fuse box behind Valda there? Yes, it is. That is a... Mm. Well spotted, Lauren. Wow. Well yep. spotted. Dissecting the background. I yeah. think that could maybe be something... Uh, Do you think behind Alexi could be like a It's a either an alarm or th thermostat. I don't know which one there. What do we got behind? I'll tell Mantu you now, that here. door in behind Mantu looks very British. Oh, yeah. That's that's, that's a, my mate's house. That's a British living round. room right there. Yep. Finally, the guns are out. Finally, Kenny has an AWP. Hell, eight rounds in. Yeah, it feels a bit odd to be saying that at this point of the game, but there have been some uh, misfires and... Oh, the misfires. All to right. Oh, okay. Oopsie doopsie. Kenny does squander $200, but he's got about five grand in his hand, so let's see how far that gets him. 
Nex is doing Boomich cosplay right now. He might be in a bit of trouble. He is going to be flashed, and he is tucked in on those sandbags. Amanek desperately wants to support this sandbag's commitment, but they're going to start catching nades. It's nice Ooh. avoid from the too deep. And that's the end of Alexi. Now, will the trade come in from Valda? It does seem like he's just going to press pause for now. And you see the bomb floating around T-step. So, OG, this is an early casualty that they're going to have to overcome. He's about to get flashed in. Free frag. Mantu tucked in for the trade. Playing like Log's position will be joined by Issa. NBK is set to lurk. It's hard to do so when you're in a 3v4. And so likely want to regroup. Yeah, that makes sense. Starting to see them return to the natural born killer's location. 2-2 two -two split of the remaining CTs does mean it's a favorable duel in favor, but this doesn't feel favorable at all. Kenny collects an easy one as Issa squats into his crosshairs. Jack's on the bike. And a wrap long with 20 seconds left. They are really out of time, but the frags from NBK catches off one of the rotates. They want to pivot B here. That is quite the audacious call to be making. Nexa in the construction. He's going to hear this coming. Oh my God, Chad, this is exactly what you talked about. They're running out of time here. 10 seconds. He can just kill this plant and win this round. To babysit will be NBK. And that's the round. Nexa saves the day. No time to really be thorough. That usual thorough OG approach discombobulated by the multi-kills early. Yeah, just too many corners to check, not enough time. And once the bomb's getting planted, the opportunity for Nexa to actually take a one-on-one -on -one fight there is very high. But if he was to die, what would uh, really put the pressure on the rotators, which were Jax and Kenny, is the fact now they would have to deal on a two-on-two -two retake on the B-bomb side. So well handled by Nexa. Might be questioning, why didn't he stop the plant? And he gets the kills, they get the round. And a very important one here for G2, because the way that this game is... Starting off, OG are looking very, very good, very precise in their decision making. Nobody seems panicked. They're not overextending. G2 need to unravel this and start clawing up some rounds because we are already on round number nine. Kenny with the flash lined up again. Let's see if he gets it second time round on the first. Is it just a mid pop or second mid? Okay, here it goes. No, it doesn't. What's his sound cue here? They're really Hunter, I middle. think we'll yeah. let him know. Now Hunter set for success. They are doing the dance and it's perfect. Look at those flash assists. Oh my God, the round's already over. G2, more specifically Hunter refusing to let this one get away from them. But Alexi taking it by force, caught by Nexa just before the descent. The smoke did leave his hands though. Perhaps something for Mantu to work around. He'll deploy his own. It's very much an indicative move. He's gonna be pointing and screaming about his location. Up A, Amanek not gonna move a muscle. Certainly rotation to be a possibility. Full set of util as well. They can just play the long game here. Nex is in a prime position. He can just wait. The default plant perfectly held. A close corner. He has to clear all the way with Kenny holding his back on a sound cue. There's no way for Mantu to get out of this apartment without Nexa hearing him. So it might have to come down to utility. And that's the decision he has to make within the next 15 to or so seconds. By smoking off long side, you can do so from balcony. You would isolate the jewel. Look at just the patience on OG. This was the same in the gun rounds as a team, and the, the mantra coming in today, take your time. Yeah, okay. So this is a sound cue. Next, we'll make the call. Next, ray off so we can work this out with Mantu together. And a flash for the cross on Kenny. That's one. Not talking to isolate this jewel. Nine seconds. That's the end of that. A valiant attempt, well held. Patience from G2, not falling into the OG trap as you have correctly outlined, Chad. It does feel like they, they had a team talk and said, maybe we need to use all the time available to us. And I want to talk a little bit about this pop flash scenario in middle. MBK was actually ahead of Hunter's timing of when he thought the attack was going to come in. Still able to mop it up, still able to make sure that the situation didn't get away from them. But this is to do with the way that OG occasionally like to approach T rounds. They'll just be quiet, they'll just play audibles, and then they'll contact and go very quick. So with those pop flashes in place and someone with his aim as good as Hunter's, you're able to unravel them. That's a deep mid smoke there. And that's allowing some very, very deep HEs towards the T stairs. So an adjustment we're seeing on the fly here from G2. It's one way to get early damage. If the T's don't want to come out and play, take the fight to them. Well, we are seeing G2 at least have a little bit of a resurgence, it feels, after being kind of ripped away from any economy. Once they've started to build that, it does seem as though they're back into this, but a lot of pressure could fall on Kenny here. 
The double stack towards quad still in play, a little bit obviously towards apartments. So they're still fine, but the initial contact oh, is on Kenny. He has to fall away now, whiffs the molly a touch, potentially, is Hunter. Set for success again, bombs his. Surely this round is as well. Ooh. Nicely done by Hunter, two back-to-back -back integral rounds for the G2 boy recovery, but hold on. There's still a little bit of danger here. Valder gets the upgrade to the rifle, smoke goes in, and the sight is somewhat theirs. No, no one from G2 to contest just yet. Valder looking for a safe haven from the flame. Ooh, a gap, and now gone. Valder. Eliminated and Nantu desperately trying to oh, contest. Stink. Staring at the floorboards. He's been pressured from all angles. Molly's bullets. He's got no way out. The spray onto Kenny's good. Not enough to convert. And three members in the G2 jerseys. Heart still beating. As we do see the 10th round conclude in favor of G2. That puts them on four. Really closing that gap. Quick reminder of how this did shape up. It was the first. Well, it was a six and one at one point. So we have seen those three consecutive rounds from G2 strung together. A nice little recap there in the center of your screens. And taking a quick look at the scoreboards as well. It's definitely pointing more credit to Mantu's start on Inferno. Next to the same, of course, you can see attributing 14 frags and 140 ADIs. We're getting those clean kills on those full HP players with that Desert Eagle. Speaking of, that's exactly what OG are going to be bringing into the fray here. No investment. It's uh, AK-47. This is wild stuff. Look at all the information G2 have right here. Just complete information into second middle. They know that it either has to be mid or banana. If they want to push out, they can. They are. So Hunter's taking even more space away from them. Jack's nading towards the mini pit. Nobody home. The flank's going to be fast, and we have three members. Flash from Jack, so it could be so hot. As Hunter comes out the hidey hole, flashback like the banana stairs, the T-stairs. Timing can be better. Or does he want to just go unannounced? He could maul them here. This could be huge. He is just going on contact and he takes the first and disappears. Suddenly paranoia rises in the ranks. Incendiary to guide him home. Fantastic work from G2 to start us off. They are locked into banana with still a minute to go. That's information. That is a frag. Kenny gets it. Falling away. More issues for Valder and co. Gosh, that was beautiful to watch, wasn't it? That was really very well done. There is still Isiru Mantu standing. 45 seconds, but Kenny's on this. They haven't cracked the B site, really. The bomb's down in a bad spot for it, but Mantu, that paranoia that was struck earlier is still resonating slightly as he has to consider the back lines, which, well, could have been incredibly viable as Jax has every opportunity to do it. But Kenny still taking the fight here, if not just playing in Hunter as soon as Mantu tries to make this cross. There he is, nicely handled by G2. Good attempt though. Mantu seems very aware of where all these fights could be coming from. And that aggressive move, G2 are now finally starting to read into this play style that OG are coming with. You know, they're grabbing information. They have little plays set up to get that free info or sometimes not free. They have to work for it. And now they are outplaying OG. It was the other way around in the early stages here. OG were doing everything by the book. The only real fumble they had was next getting four kills towards the back of the B site on round number two. But since then, well, they were definitely trending in the right direction. Now it looks like we're going back to more of a default round. Bit of utility exchange over towards Banana. Smoke up the top to obscure vision. They had an exchange to keep them at bay. MBK. Sorry, that's Issa over towards second middle. Just patrolling and controlling. As there we go, MBK is coming to play. So it's a default spread now. They're not going for one of those more gambly early contacts or pounce executes. This is back to Colors by Numbers Inferno. Get your banana control, get your mid control, make a bit of a call off of it. Yes, pulled one over. They've definitely set the bar for we can do very late sight hits if you're uh, OG. They're not going to be too fast, too rushed. But again, G2 seem to be aware of this now as the T side does mount the pressure towards middle. So it is going to be pulling Amanek in the right direction. In fact, Nexus is considering it too. Yeah, that's double pumps really working out well. This is something similar to what we saw from Heroic. Throwing util B, throw util A, finish B. It's happening again. Kenny to deal with it. 
And he will have a good chance. Not anymore. Mantu boosted up and he connects his shots, but look at this. Oh, they're going back. Oh my goodness. It's a triple pump into the stack now. Unless Almanek gets his socks pulled up towards Speedway, but no, he won't. Seconds. They have to go away now. It's so obvious. And this they're into the side. Almanek can really destabilize. They need to get that bomb down soon. And Valdez just lost it in middle. This is the other side of the coin. It's a dominant finish from Jax's double. Looked uh, great, of course, with the hindsight of the minimap. You can see what could and should have happened. Uh, it's not the case, obviously. You're, you're making these calls blind. And uh, that's just the other side. That's, that's what it looks like when it hasn't worked, spiffingly. Yeah, and that's what we were trying to build up for you, that if it doesn't pull the rotation or if you don't have an execute to isolate the CTs, you're running into a blender. G2 at this point now, even though they were rotating around, it was a reasonable rotation. They had Kenny, an AWP player, post up towards Top Banana. He was calling it was clear. This could be a quick change, though, over towards the B site. Lots of nades to come out early. Oh, my oh. God. Good night. The nukes just struck, hasn't it? Oh. oh, he's now down. This is just which circle of hell do you want to go to now, OG? Oh, this is brutal. Just losing all of their health before they get to play. Reminiscent of uh, Rush's Danger Zone debut. When was that timeout taken? Did the timeout happen and then we finally saw OG, uh, sorry, G2 starting to come alive? I can't remember what round it was called on, but they definitely took one and they needed to talk through something. And whatever has been said, it seems to be working now. They're awake, they're online, and they're battling back six to, sorry, seven to six now. Okay, all right. This deep game. smoke here is what they use to nade deep T stairs before. It gives them a little bit more wiggle room, but they're going to go for oh, mid aggression again. We saw this before. They're doing it once more. Look at it. There's nobody home. Well, they found something to exploit, haven't they? They found a little bit of a way to get that player, be it Hunter or whomever else, into a great position. However, Nexa are now out on an island. You can see the others trying to support, but if anything, they took so much damage. He now has to stay there. He can't really get out. So you do have Kenny to support, but there goes Nexa. It's a troubling time for the CTs here, but let's see how they handle it. They still have that flank. And last time it was monstrous and it might just be again. God, the map looks tiny, doesn't it? It's just been split into this one funnel. And the CTs can stay posted up there as Hunter finally decides now's the time as the smokes begin to fly. The utility gets put into play, but they fall off this. Yeah, so Amanek's about to pull up his socks. Here we go. How fast can you rotate? He's charging back over towards the A site to try and fill the gap, and I can't be quite believe it, but the oh, they're whole both going. team is going. Oh, oh, no, they're biting real oh. hard here. I don't know what they think the tell is. I'm not sure why they've over-rotated. Maybe it's Amanek's HP, but it's really take or B. Yeah, it is, but it, I don't know if they've got a smoke for the cross. It's going to be a chance, really viable one for Kenny. And there's the shot. Perfection. Jiggles confirms MBK still wants to take that fight, considering the probability of a free plant. He will give it a good go, and he will have a shot. Up against some of his old teammates, no less. Kenny S, NBK, quite the history. He's actively holding for this fight. He knows he needs to find one before they set up for the three-man push. Seven bullets in the mag as well. Flash comes in, falls away, still alive, but it feels like a matter of time. The net's closing in, and Amanek is the one to do the job. Nicely done by G2. This road to recovery has been quite excellent. This is fantastic. Seven on the trot here. Six one down, now seven in a row, potentially closing the half out with nine six. It's cooled over on the side of things for OG. In the early stages, you know, we had Alexi with that MAC-10. He was finding some opening frags aggressively towards Top Banana. Mantu was opening things on up. On that force by round, they won Issa with the Deagle onto Jax. But since then, it, these, these calls, they're being read. And now it feels like G2 are more the ones dictating the play. Aggressive plays out the mid window, pop flashing into the attacks. Here it is again. They're doing the same play once more. They're going to have to fight this time. It's this different. The flash is there. The spray isn't. Jax is in oh. a triple before the flames catch him on retreat. Competitive and brutal. Five corpses lit a second middle. We've still got 90 seconds of play ahead of us. And you know, OG, they will press the pause button here. Mantu and Valda given a tool task, a tool order. It's a mocha choca frappuccino venti. Mm. Doesn't venti mean 10? I think it's to do with the ounces in America. Yeah, it's weird because yeah. I thought large was something else in... Italian. 
Yeah. It definitely doesn't mean large. I think no. tall means large, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, as, I, look, GCSE Italian really didn't serve me very well, I'm going to be honest. But mm, what do you do with this much time? You've got a minute. You've got all, not all your util, but a good a good portion of it, right? You've got yeah. a good chunk to play with. They can they can come up with something. It's just what's the ideal scenario? Because we've seen Kenny everywhere. He's been in mid. He's been at B. He's been just about all over the map. So, hmm. I mean, look what he's actually it. positioning himself to do. Did you, know, did you notice how he wasn't zoomed in there? He was going for the no Stop scope that. to the belly, which means he can just jiggle for the right side info without not being aware of apps. Okay, now he wants to have a look. He sees the time, 30 seconds. Let's him relocate. This is very good play from Kenny. Nade timing does look a little short. He could get caught in transition. Oh. Valder's in trouble. Quick reaction, not enough. Valder does manage to equalize, and now with a smoke down, this is Counter-Strike. Looks like OG can pick up the seventh if they choose to. Guys, 10, ten seconds. seconds. Someone plant, someone plant. Yes, okie dokie. Five. Whoa, 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 whoa. Four. Four is the magic number. Everything's fine. Everyone take a breath. So they know one site, one pit with the plant coming in. Both are going to come through quad, it looks like. Actually, next up, pivoting, clearing holes. They have a Molotov for the bike position, but that's it. All right, Mantu posted up, first port of call. Watching that cross, Valde gets the contact. That's not bad at all. Molly goes in, buys the time. Valde puts him down. It's been a topsy-turvy run. OG started out looking incredible. A mass of run of rounds, but then G2 suddenly woke up.
I believe one of his cats is called Lucifer. So we'll see if he can continue to uh, bring the uh, pain. Something. I do it with hell, something. fire. Yeah. 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 There was something there. He could have rustled it up, but here we are. Nonetheless, no util on the T side. Wow, okay. Might be a fast one then with that in the play. You can see next to going towards T stairs, the in game leader might just shoot some bullets up middle as the other four are making it very, very swiftly up second mid. Are they going to pull the brakes? No, they're just going fast. Okay, I was waiting for them to turn at some point, but that. The jumping Glock train ain't stopping, is it? Look at them. Look at these guys just bounding around the map. Alexi B is probably baffled at the sight of this, but here they come, and there goes the nade. They've been halted for a second, and it looks uh, not so great. Oh, and to trying to change the uh, way this pendulum swings. If Kenny pivots to where, he's onto something. Nice full commits into the B site. Well done, is... low. Nexus hitting all his headshots. That's groovy. Be able to get that bomb down. And now it's just MBK on that long rotate. He was the cover all. Ready for that A rotate back. But now he's coming in from Banana for a one versus two situation. Certainly doesn't look probable, but possible. Seven frags to his name so far. Have to change that tally to nine if he wants a chance of putting the eighth on the board for his squad. Certainly not looking likely. Both in construction, doubled up, no kit. 10 seconds, I'll just peek one by one, rot the clock. In fact, I'd say up at this point, it's impossible. Yep, not going to get that first clean headshot. Oh. He is going to adjust nicely into Kenny S, but as expected, G2 and Nexa turn that one back around. It looked like they'd done enough, seeing that util, those opening two frags, a 3v5 temporarily. And you can see that the MVP of that one, no doubt to be Nexa, as he was the one that pulled them back over the finish line. It was Hunter and Nexa combined, the two players fragging for G2 in that pistol round. Nine to seven, first map our second series of our first day here at ESL Pro League. 22 frags for Nexa on 16 rounds of play. Wow. And considering he was having a horrible start of just nade damage. Oh, shut failed down. Molly again. That was G2. Where did that just They've go? They've been failing a couple of their nades. It's very peculiar because everything else looks quite tight-knit. But yeah, Kenny flubbing his flashes earlier and we've seen a Molotov destined for Banana landing at the T-Ramp. Small touches. Not going to lose you around, but certainly not going to make you feel good. Unlike taking a moment to smell the flowers. <laughs> Which flash has he got in mind? It's going to be straight up mid. Calling it clear. CTs and became Mantu to be tested with only their Desert Eagles. There's so much smoke uh, on this OG's defense. If they are... Not careful. G2 could be running through gray screen with 10, 20 seconds left. They want to make sure that's not going to happen. And so either pull those smokes out or go as a unit and disrespect that smoke together with your bigger weapons. Here we go. Talk about it. Here it comes the hit. Smokes go up. There go the T's and the CT's. Have no idea so far. MBK probably the only one who has real clean vision for that. Mantu is tucked in towards a pit. There's the first check. Nicely cleared by the T's. Again, these guys' early game seem quite well constructed. Both teams have looked quite good early game. It could have got very messy there. There was a quad smoke that went down as their execute came on in. And I'm not quite sure which player was pushing up through it, but they had to take the risk. And that fight, if won by OG, would have meant the remainder of the players on the site could have all focused over towards the wrapping G2 individuals, but they get away with a clean one here. And if they go and save towards the pit or even go back down second middle, we can see here on the radar that they can remain safe. OG just want to hold on to double dip, see if they can use these deagles in the light bit of utility once again. No dramas. We understand exactly how this one could go on, but they might need to take the fight to G2 in the following. If you sit back and you play that, not gambly style, but you, you wait for the T's to make the first move, well, you might find yourself in the wrong position. And because they won't all be upgraded with the Deagles and Kevlar behind it, might be more over to try and find an opening pick. So here's what I mean. You can see a player in front of Quad just here pushing on up, and the smoke behind him is actually one from the CT. So that was Jax, I think. No, Jax was coming through Castle. Graveyard. It was you Kenny out. S. Thank you, Rush. Thank you, Rush. And, and I did hear word that we might even get Rush joining us on some casts some days. Oh, yes, yes. You know, just to keep those at home knowing what might be happening we've got some we got some plans so maybe tomorrow during tomorrow uh, during heroic versus ents i believe that's the game we have to kick off the day um we'll get rush to come out cast with you guys and i'll go ply my trade as an observer plumbing 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Plumb it all together. See if I can dig myself out of a couple of holes back there in the uh, <laughs> production room. Not for the first time. Oh, not again, Alex. Oh, I like that. That's all right. Thorin, if you keep acting offended, people will think you're actually offended. I, I, I'm, I'm really not allowed to make these jokes if you keep pretending you're offended. <laughs> I mean, it was more in reference to Chab, you know, um, plumbing joke that was all over the internet, of course. We can go real deep with those plumbing jokes, Lauren, don't you worry. I'm sure. Um, however, what may lack a little depth is what the CT side can do in this round, considering they're starting to wind down all that utility that they once were trying to ply in here and there. It's all been dissipated, but... Wow, okay, the stack is heading over towards B. The bomb's yet to be collected by the T-side either, keep in mind. So, final destination? It's an okay movie. <laughs> not about the sequels. No, not so sure about those. Did make me scared of any truck with a couple of logs on the it, loose right? Log, oh, yeah. every time on, on, you know, motorways. Terrified. Huge room garnered, though, and obviously you guys can see it too if you are... Uh, not watching on the main screen, the A site is completely sparse of CT players. They all went over towards B, so a nice little plant and a 5v5 close plant. Hey guys, this is going to be a perfect example of the Amanek Mac 10 spray control tutorial. Amanek, uh, I mean, if you can see his stickers, that's uh, not his, damn it. He has, oh, it is Amanek 10. You can see that. He's actually named himself after the SMG he currently holds. He is a big fan of it. He is, and uh, he's about to try and go farm some money. So let's see how his control is. Long range, Mac 10 bursts, bursts of three. Drr. Almost David Attenborough esque here, Alex. Yeah, it's a new angle, Chad. It's my low energy, but still trying to do my job professionally. Approach. Okay. It's a curious one. He doesn't get anything. That's a shame. Look at how tidy he's remaining here. We could have had an absolute slaughter in construction. We didn't even get a, a kill. We had a unicorn round. We don't get them very often. And that's why we call them the unicorn round. And now I confused a unicorn and a pegasus. Uh, you did. Pegasus can fly, the unicorn cannot. Is, is there a pegasus round? I, I, I didn't know if you confused the term. No, no, no. no just no. the animal. Just the animal. Got it. Um, they're both, I suppose, similar looking, uh, but just one can fly and one can't. But we have three MAC-10s out here, guys. This could be a, a set piece where they want to get up close and personal with an execute onto A. That's what it looks like to me right here. Next to taking banana control, the rest over towards alt middle. So just fighting a little bit more going on earlier in the map than what we were seeing from that OGT side. And look how quick they are. Yeah, he's ahead, he's ahead of, of the smoke. It. This is very promising for Jax. Bye bye. Finds him. Oh, the flash was so perfect. He's not going to opt for the weapon upgrade. Man, to, to be tested. Hunter bomb spotted on Balk. Swinging from short to free frag for Man, to collecting nicely and more to come as well. Misses his shot. Maybe G2 have got a shot here. Two SMGs swarming the site, and no fresh mag for MBK. He's going to have to do it with the USP. One for one. Bomb to be planted. Hunter's responsibility. Amanek holding that down for now with the AWP on graveyard, looking to put Balder in the grave. Hunter. Seen yeah, exactly. And he's still faffing around with his nades. It's a free frag. Now only that AWP is going to make very awkward for Amanek missing his shots. Not the second, but makes him vulnerable to Alexi B. And so, AMG will grab themselves an AWP and a Diffuse, puts us on 11 to 8. Now, this is when we start talking about the competition. A reminder that G2 did string together about seven or eight rounds at the end of that first half, and they've just managed to break their silence now. OG get their first in what feels like nine across the two halves. And that's going to make them certainly feel good. The bye doesn't, though, Chadney. Well, yeah, that was a full-on bonus round. We were talking about the MAC-10s. There was three of them. There was a Glil in play as well, and it got whittled down to just one sole survivor. So the CTs having to cobble together whatever they have. Everybody empty your pockets. And let's see what we can bring into round number 20 here. Amanek with the MAC-10 is indicative of something potentially decisive early as well, but it's going to be a brawl over to Banana here. Oh, Nexa. God, that's brave. He's got the bomb on his back, and he was isolated by the Molotov, so... Great work from him to find Mantu, otherwise that could have been a little bit more dangerous than it was. Thank you to Jaegen. It's called a venti because 20 ounces and venti in Italian is 20. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for Smashed playing it. at home. Thank we you, appreciate Jaegen. that. Yeah. That's cool. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Jaegen, Jürgen. Jürgen. Next has 24 kills. He's been having a game. He has indeed. He cooled off last time these two teams played. And he's back with a vengeance right now. And... Now back towards A is where G2 head. A little bit of light utility over towards top middle. The rotation has been split into a 2-2 defense. So guess what? You got to go big right now, Isa. 
How do you hold this one? You've got MBK by your side, SMG to hand, he's fallen. Suddenly the gates are open and you're surrounded on both fronts. Tries to slip away into the shadows, finds Kenny lingering there and actually succeeds. So not bad work from him, he can stay alive potentially and wait for support. But by this point, bombs down four against you. Do you even really go for anything? I'm actually quite surprised Dissa didn't just grab that open peg it. Yeah. After that kill on Kenny. Now, I mean, he is aware that there is presence in those apartments, his patrol to find him. And instead, yeah, no, he's just going to leave it idle and take that FAMAS into the next mm. instead. Okay, well, the bounce back, unfortunately, for OG means that their money is well and truly in the bin. Now, yes. if, if you've been in the bin before, you know that it's not a fun place. That's where people throw their trash. And OG, uh, look, they've got a bit more than trash because they have that uh, saved AWP and the M4. They will be able to drop guns across, so it's not as bad as I originally anticipated here. Volda can drop if they need. Isso or Alexi can do the same with a Famous or a UMP. So they will be able to get something going here. I jumped to a conclusion a little bit too soon there on behalf of the OG side of things financially. And that's how it started and basically ended. Because losing your star player, the gentleman with 17 kills to his name, and the AWPer who can hold down some map control that quickly in the round, well, it's never going to feel good. No, it's certainly not. Right, let's see what Mantu can do. I want to see this man on the AWP. I want to see him bring a bit of power. I, I haven't been enamored with him yet. I haven't seen what he brings. He seems like a very safe pair of hands. He seems like he's always good for maybe a, a kill hero there, but haven't quite seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kenny, for example, and Shine. So, again, it was hard to see that as the first series of let's see what this man can bring. So, obviously not easy, of course. Not a, not a light task to be given, but could be fun. Only to flush out the boiler position. Nobody's home. MBK and Issa have managed to go for this. Usually it's a one to half. Stack up on that quad, boost him up. He plays anti flash if Issa's blind, which he will be. Whoop. MBK has to get a multi. That's the cue. And that's the multi. Issa does manage to dip out of dodge. That nade looks promising. And he did back away on the cue. Still does half Kenny. Working with just 50 for the rest of this one. Hunter tucked in on the bench. Three players set up for this A defense and flashing them off at 40 seconds. Hunter clutching onto what little of his utility that remains. In fact, three smokes for us to play video games. And to over on that coffin's position, Valde is rotating in. So the CTs with no nades are going to have to defend with bullets and bodies. It's the one bonus, they have 25 seconds to hold on. That's mm -hmm. it, that's where the line is drawn, the tease. That last bit of utility, that What's one it? flash, gone now. Here we go, Hunter's got the smoke, smoke goes in. They're going for this smoke towards Coffins too, if I'm not mistaken. So that might, might put off Mantu here, playing with the timing, eight seconds, Alex is down to the wire. Sick play from Valder, takes the opportunity, takes the head of Kenny, and takes the round for OG. That's right. exactly what happened to OG at times as well. When you find yourself doubling back and losing unforeseen casualties, you can end up just running down that clock to the point where a single flashbang shaves off that unaccounted for eight seconds. Let's see that again. It's that NBK. Hopefully jubbly. Double kills all it needs to send them back into that A site. A rather B. And Valder with a very neat 3K that kind of just jumps on his plate and says, take me. And to Issa over towards the A for the early util. Kenny in front of that Molotov, and the flash towards the Ooh. top has cleared off any aggression. And now, once again, they're very quick on apps, right? This is something that they did earlier. We saw Jax get up there in a previous round. And by taking that much space, they apply a pressure to this two-man A defense. The rotation has come in, so they do have three on the site now, but this is quick. Very quick. NBK in the smoke. Jax jumped through, and oh, a nice shot from NBK. He'll happily take the upgrade. Double kill to start. OG in pursuit of their double digits. Flank's coming, oh, they have no it. idea. Yeah, it's just the potential, I mean... Oh no, they're looking. They're look looking. Alda, yeah. Alexi is so pushed down, I can't help but feel that he can single-handedly destabilize this whole thing. And Amanek, on that flank. Is he even going to check his corners? Oh, they must have known he slipped through. Double peek into a Fama. Nearly takes them both. My God, Alexi could have won the round right there. Even Dink next up. Valda flashed off, smoked off. Likely just throws down a bit of pre-fire on the steps. Brrrah. 
the end of that, 12 to 10. So to explain why they probably didn't check that same close corner is probably the reason that Amanek didn't check his corners as well. So they assumed that they had no idea they'd gotten through into the back lines. Amanek then dying and then being aware that the setup had changed, you would assume OG would be playing a passive setup on the site, right? Well, look where Volda is. Maybe the other guy's emo or his new box in the back of the site. They're just turtled up. They're waiting for us to come for this split. So we wouldn't want to give anything away. If we know Amanek's here, we wouldn't want to be aggressive banana. However, they knew everything. They knew that they could be aggressive banana. Alexi had all the territory. Volda knew the flank was coming in, handled that. And that'll be it for G2 as we shift forward and another timeout is used. They have one remaining. This is the kill or the trade. Just quickly swinging on over as Nexa now with 25 kills to his name. Once it goes down. Yeah, they, they, they kind of cleared it. But when you're the close player clearing like you saw Hunter doing, he's always going to get taken down in that kind of a scenario. It will just be some pistols being upgraded in here. Thank the money's goodness. not, yeah, it's not terrible on the G2 side, but it's not enough to warrant a full buy. So they're just now pottering around spawn <laughs> in the last few lovely jubblies. And if you say potter, it always makes you think of the garden, you know? Yeah. If you're pottering around, it's mostly in the garden. I yeah, your pot plants. Mm-hmm. They really are having a old chin wag, aren't they? Taking their time here. No rush. This has been a, normally, you know, we see such aggression towards Banana and fighting for control and the utility, the back and forth, the rally of nades, more aggression over towards Boiler and more fighting going on. The CT's postured forward, then pushing you back. But right now, both these teams are more than happy to give up the respective map control. OG do have Banana for the meantime, but there is a timer on that. And that's a problem. So this top banana smoke is meant to obscure vision, but look who's in front of it again, Alexi. All the information in the world. And if he sticks his nose around the corner, nobody's even watching. A fast flank could come in. Yeah. Holder could even rotate. Yeah, this is really spells trouble for G2. So much information for the OG camp already. And they've got util to burn. You can hear the incendiary deploy just by more time. 40 seconds. And this is the go. Just tech nines in armor. All right, let's see if any threats build. So far, so good. Oh, <laughs> Nexus is quite, quite spicy, isn't he, it really? Is. Should be okay, I guess. Is the orb back? Yeah, just about picked it back up. A little, little unfortunate. It's not what you want to see from an opera as you get charged down by pistols. He was in the right place, right time, just, you know, the... Uh, Shot, yeah, I don't know if he had head, head armor as well, and that Glock just looked like it did helped. so much damage. Yeah. Oh, he had 30 HP, okay. 31, so Nexus with the dink. Boom, boom, boom. 12 to 11, these guys are just in, inseparable. I mean, it's, it's funny because this has just been a slews of rounds. Like, it's never been back and forth other than the first maybe round or so. And then we've just had just strings of six, seven. In this half, we've seen more pairs of three. Think about how much of a hero Nex has been in this game. Yeah. On that force buy in the second round of the game, that four kill with the Deagle. And then mm -hmm. on the pistol round on the second half, he had to bail them out once more. So Nex's frags, they are impact kills. They're not just padding the stats by any means, but it feels like we want to go a little bit more direct on the G2 side of things. That banana control right now might be setting up for the ex execute early. Oh, that molly just buying a second or two. And yeah, Nexus so far, all killer, no filler. Alexi B though has been the fact finder, the inspector on the other side, but he's gone down. So eyes now removed from the board. The fog of war kind of comes in. So they lose a little bit of that track. You still have Jax over towards the other side. So with one minute left, Oh, that's unfortunate to lose out on Hunter. They could have built off the back of it. Good catch from Valda. Three man stack over here. This could be a bloodbath on B if they decide they want to commit. They have enough utility to do it, but the CT defense will be very strong. The rotation from Issa is a mile away, so they need to make sure that they're converting out the trades. Nice flash. Oh, that clock feels so low, Alex. I'm getting scared of this Counter-Strike. I mean, I'm not the one playing. These boys are, and they're feeling brave, but look at the damage coming through. That was the bomb. What a perfect shot. Oh. Mantu doubles up and double. Trouble! Oh! Quad kill. My goodness, three bullets, four kills. He lines them up, knocks them down, and levels up the game. 12-12, Mantu. You said he wanted to step up. You said he had to prove himself, Lauren. I'm sure that's a pretty good way to start, go about it. That was pretty hot. Om Carrier on his first peak. Nexer on his second. Boom. 
can't ask for much more, can you? Oh, dear. Well, in the last four rounds that have been put on the board here from that of OG, they've been erecting that CT side of wall. They've only lost oh. three frags in four rounds. And okay, hold up a second. Now we're talking. Next has found an opening onto Volda. Might need to get a little bit more brawly right here, G2. OG are handling the pace that they're throwing at them very, very well. They can snowball another headshot. A could be theirs. That nade. Oh, oh really going to hurt. Leave a mark. MBK does lose his life. M4 scatters the floor. Nothing for them to really write home about. It's a nice movement from Hunter to actually get himself another kill. Keep doing damage. One. CTs have got money for days. It will have to be a round win to have any real impact here. If he goes to B, he can time them here. Alexi can't make noise in halls. He's found the gap. There is a window here. He might be worried about an individual still over towards the B side. Now he can run. Now he knows he can make some footsteps. Doesn't have any utility to work with. Antu will hear this. He's on his way right now. This no. is a race. Oh, he's gone the long way. He Went won't hear this through speedway. He won't hear it. Yeah, he won't have the confirmation in Hunter's planning safe. Oh. <laughs> Nasty. He had plenty of time to find a safer spot. Didn't anticipate the fastest rotator. So Mantu, good read. And that's another round that he closes out. That's two in a row. And for OG, that's five. All eliminations. Not seeing G2 getting too much after plant action. Let's see a pace change right now from G2. Something a little bit more aggressive or something a little bit more decisive off the bat where they are trying to take the fight. This is the last tactical timeout being called here from G2. And the game started in a similar way to how it feels now. Remember that opening window? It, it wasn't really going in their favor. Then they put that streak of seven. And then they started the half in pretty good fashion. Next are bailing them out. A couple of clean rounds. Good looking gun round in the early stages. And then now it's tapered off again. They feel like they've taken a step mm. back. They're not playing the type of Counter-Strike that can activate their individuals. But on the other side of things, we're seeing, some, oh, there's Issa. We're seeing some really cool lockdowns. Really cool lockdowns going on. So OG are doing a great job here of just shutting them down. AKs are out. Hamanek deciding if he needs a, a MAC-10 or not. That was a... Uh, <laughs> That was one of the keys that we were talking about before. So yeah, it will be the AK. Playful time. Not sure if that's telling of what type of round to expect here. We'll keep our eyes on it. You wanted the switch up of pace. Let's see what they've come up with that timeout. They've been kind of considering maybe trying to keep it in mind. And it looks quite, oh, I don't say all links. They still have a bit of mid control. Oh, Hunter. Middle of nowhere. Maybe a switch up sure from the CT side. But you want gun out games, right? You want to be able to see them fighting back. And it was none of that. It's a good push. CT aggression rewarded yet again. And to, oh, I like that. It's going to really throw a spanner in the works of anything early they wanted to do. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, that's a gap and a very nasty one. I thought he perfectly deployed that, just isolated middle, but instead, Kenny S is given a freebie. And they're back into this round. Issa's having a great game here. The spray's so good. They're so low. The USP can't finish, but Valda can. And all on to Amanek. Unfortunately, with 55 health, he is in a spot of bother, Ooh. as Winnie the Pooh would say. If no he, bother. If he finds this jewel... No, he can't now. Valda too smart. Slippery. Yeah. Slides away. Another another player would probably have stuck around, right? Uh, Valda playing it by the book here, making sure that he doesn't give up anything. And you can just see the positions that the CTs are in. MBK, anchoring pit. Could be... Able to take him down with ease. And that's Amanek falling. 14 on the board now for OG. That five-map streak of Inferno wins the green next to the column. Could be going up to six. Yeah, and, and I mean, seeing some great evidence for it. I mean, some of their CT protocols, the way this round started, it's, you know, had a great frag from Issa. The damage he did, you noted it. It was... Uh... Pretty lovely for Valda to come into that, right? You just sat there. Yeah, practically a 3K. I'll let Valda take the credit. No warp in play for the T side. They've had to put all of their pennies and schmeckles together, and they've got themselves a pretty much a solid and functional buy. Galil, in the absence of some nades. Going to be seeing actually that T smoke not extinguish the molly. Why does that sometimes happen, Chad? I hear the sound. Is that just CSGO? There's a bit of inconsistency with the Molotovs, even with the Molotov spread. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that there is a little level of randomness to this. But you kind of need that occasionally. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's just so when I hear the extinguish sound, you expect to see the full molly go out. This time did not. They won't be able to advance up B as they may have intended. NBK, ooh, does he have anything? He does not. He'll just underhand that one. 
Bit of a one way for him to see over from the balcony position and a great shot from Mantu. Another easy pickings for the big man, Ting. And now a 2v1. Kenny found out by Alexi, and this is 15. OG have come into the CT side, and you're right, just set up the blue wall. We have not seen G2 find a successful round since round 20. I think one of the positives right now on the OG side is that Mantu has 27 kills and then he's joined by Volda and MBK who have 17 apiece. So he has some other units here and the multi-frags seem to be ticking on up for the OG side of things every time they get put in position of bother. On the other side, Kenny's quiet, eight kills. You know, he's seen him flubbing some nades. Jack's only there on 12. I, I said that he was one of the key pieces on Dust2 of why they were able to win that game last time. And next on 29, he needs some help. He needs some impact from the others. Now's the time, right? Nexus is still up to the challenge, but does burn for it. And Hunter took a fair whack of damage too, but Alexi B is slightly more alone than he was before, but MBK coming over in support towards that B site has split the CT defense. And again, these nades are just chunking away. Kenny just got taken down 50. Recovery on the rifle though, so they at least get the AK to filter back into the uh, rest of the T's. This is trouble. OG. Off from ideal. Yeah, they've been so good in these late round situations. They're just locking down the G2 pushes. And look at the look at the positions that's being played from MBK right now. Yeah, my goodness. Anti-flash in the pool. And they're not expecting that. They're gonna come through gray screened into his domain. He only won. And Alexi will catch Amanek. He has a smoke to play around. Hunter's low as well. Very, very promising scenes for OG to close it right here. Right now, two frags is all it will take for OG to get a touch of redemption. And as the smoke fades, Alexi could get shot in the bottom. Good catch. Hunter gets the time and good positioning. It's a great shot. Okay, so now, unfortunately for Hunter, he's got a... Mm, you are living life on the edge, boy. Recovers the bomb, gets it down. The flames weren't quite deep enough. But with this kind of HP, this is often when I say Hunter plays his best, actually when he knows the margin for error is so slim. And with his crosshair placement, there is a slight recipe for success, but Mantu, oh, and that was perfect. They even had the molly for his retreat. Very few options for him, and that will be OG taking our first map. That was their pick, and how many Oat Infernos is that now?